draw me closer to you, Lord. Draw me closer to you. Let my heart not drift away. Let my heart be captivated by who you are. Let my heart be captivated by your words. Let my heart be captivated by your presence, by your love, by your spirit, by your presence. Let my love, let my heart be captivated by you. Let me not be enticed. Let me not be like what the Bible says, to guard your eyes, to guard your ears, to guard your heart, because the heart is the wellspring of life. And I pray that we would draw closer to the Lord, that we won't drift away, that we won't have our heart, uh, especially in this time, that our hearts will be even getting closer to the Lord. Say, so God, I want to draw nearer to you. I want to hear your voice. I want to uh, be in your presence. I want to draw closer to you. I want to know you even more. I want to know you. I want to know what your word says. I want to know what your word says about, about who you are and about, about you and I, Lord. I want to know you. And I pray that that would be your heart. I Look, at, there's, a, there's a hunger and there's a thirst for God's word like ever, like ever before. Maybe some people have drifted away, but... Now is a time to be hungry for the worst. God, I, I just want to know you, God. I want to know you. I want to know what your word says. I want to know, Father. I want to know you in a deeper way. And there's, I believe there's a hunger and there's a thirst. Yes, the Bible says that in the last days, there's going to be an apostasy. Meaning there's going to be a turning away. But also, too, there's going to be a revival. A revival of God's word. And that's what's happening, I believe, in our hearts today. That there's a revival. There's us getting closer to the Lord. Us saying, God, Lord, what does your word have to say? And look at, there's a revival across the land. In Jesus' name. Good morning, Jody Caderon. It is November the 11th already. So fast, so crazy. November 11th. And uh, going back. Um, <laughs> going back to the watering, my wife said uh, yesterday, going back to the grass and, and the landscaping, uh, uh, my wife, she said, she said, wow, she said, sometimes we don't realize the progress until the, until time goes by. We don't realize that there's, there's uh, things happening behind the scenes. There's things happening behind the scenes and a lot of times we, we realize like, oh, the progress is not going good or, or trusting in the process. And then uh, yesterday she's like, oh my God, she's like, the grass is is growing. The grass is, is sprouting new stuff. She's like, she's like, all by watering? I said, yes, all by watering. I, and then uh, just sharing with her, just uh, with the Lord speaking to me on this on this thing. And then she got revelation too. She's like, about the progress. A lot of times we feel like, is there progress going on inside of me? Is there progress? There's progress. Why? Because there is water being put into, into the right spots. There's water being, being, being poured upon us, being, being lavished upon us. There's water in this place, guys. There is food in this place. There is bread in the oven, guys. There is revelation. There is insight. There is a, there's a, a hunger for God. And I, I want more, God. And Lord, like just like what Nicole says, sometimes she feels like it's not enough or she's not doing enough. And just looking at the progress, look at what's, what's happening and, and seeing how you, when, you, when we first started and to what's going on now, and you're like, wait, there has been progress. There has been change. There has been transformation. I have been waking up at 5.30 in the morning. I have been getting into my word. I have been, been studying. I have been going deeper with the Lord. I have been paying attention. I have been getting uh, the, the insights. Like, wow, this is powerful. This is so good. And just getting that hunger is like, I want more. I want more. And look at, look at the progress that you and I have, have had when we first started. 
I didn't know how it was going to turn out when I, when I first started this morning uh, devotional, morning blog, morning vlog. I didn't know how it was going to turn out. And then look what the Lord is, is doing. Look what the Lord is doing in your life. You may say, it, there's, you're like, but there's not big transformation. But there's, there's transformation. There is like, you're, you're going deeper. When in your lifetime have you gone through the word of God in a year? Maybe you've been through the word of God only on, on Sundays and that's it. And then sometimes you still feel distracted even when you go to church. But now you have set aside a time. You set aside time to come in and to to hear the morning devotional, to hear the the Bible audio, to get into the Word, to go after to get it, to get your one year Bible, and look at the progress that is happening in your life. I've seen progress in your life, and I I I wholeheartedly believe that you've seen progress in my life. You're like, wow! How does this young man? I'm not a young man. I'm in my thirties. <laughs> how does this? How does this crazy guy get up at five thirty in the morning on a daily basis and sharing the word? Even though I have a job. I'm, I'm a husband. I'm a father. You know, I got a full time job. You know, how does he do it? Well, I tell you how I do it. It's like God. I'm hungry for your word. God, I want to know you. I want to know you, right? Right, Rachel? This is how you start your year. I started, I just started my first year and it made a change in my life. That's right. It's so powerful. And that's what happens when we get into God's word. It brings forth change and transformation. And so we're going to be getting into Ezekiel. Uh, it's November 11th. And that's what I love about the one-year Bible too. Look at it. It's backwards, but look at um, Because the camera... But it says November 11th. A lot of times they're like, where do I start in the Winger Bible? Where do I start? You see, November, what's today's date? You start on today's date and you, you read it. You read it and then it goes into the Old Testament, New Testament, Psalms and Proverbs. And you start on that day. You're like, but what about all the, all the other portions that I missed? Well, you, you, you do the cycle. You, you continue. We're going to start on today, November 11th. And then also too. But those who have fallen behind, it's like, oh, I haven't read since uh, October 4th. Well, you start, the Bible says mercy is new every morning. So you start on today. You start today. And so today is actually kind of crazy. It's a crazy, uh, crazy portion of scripture in the Old Testament. It's very uh, graphic. It's very, uh, it's like, wow. It's like, it's an eye opener. It's, it's how the Lord sees sin. It's how the Lord... Uh, is is uh how it it's pretty uh it's pretty intense it's pretty intense of uh what what is shared here on the uh in the in the message today and so but the Lord is giving us revelation even too in in this and uh, we're gonna be reading Ezekiel chapter twenty three it's uh one through forty nine and then um, also to Hebrews chapter. That's Ezekiel, and then we're going to be reading Hebrews chapter 10, 18 through 39. And then uh, Psalms 109, 1 through 31. And then we'll finish it off with uh, Proverbs 27, 13. And so let's get into Ezekiel. Pretty, uh, pretty intense. And so here it goes. It says, This message came to me from the Lord, son of man. Once there were two sisters who were daughters of the same mother. They became prostitutes in Egypt. Even as young girl, girls, they allowed men to fondle uh, their breasts. Their older, the older girl was Ahola, and her sister was Aholaba. I married them, and they bore me sons and daughters. And I'm speaking of Samaria and Jerusalem, for Ahola is Samaria, and Aholaba is Jerusalem. And let's just stop right there. So in this portion of scripture, we're ta it's talking about the northern Israel and the southern Israel. And so it's talking about how they became wayward. And it was talking about how they were enticed by what they saw. They were enticed by what they heard. And so God is talking about Samaria and Jerusalem. But he used Ohola is Samaria. 
Aholabah is Jerusalem. And so let's look at God's, God began to, to show me as far as uh, uh, the names Ahola and Aholaba. And so Ahola, it means, let me show you what it means. Check this out. It's powerful. So Ahola means her own tent or her own tabernacle. Aholaba means my tabernacle is in her. Meaning, what do we read about the tabernacle before? The tabernacle means the resting place. The tabernacle means uh, where God dwells. And so, Ahola, her name means uh, her own tabernacle. And I was just, just hearing the inside. Like, God, what are, you, what are you saying in this? What are you showing in this? And so, Ahola, it means her own tabernacle. So, Ahola... In the very beginning, she's like, I'm going to do my own thing. Even in, in, uh, in what happened with it, the northern and southern Israel, Ahola says, I'm going to make my own tabernacle. I'm going to make my own temple mount. I'm going to do the things that I want to do. I'm going to do the things that, that I see right in my own eyes. You hear that? That a lot of times we do things that are right in our own eyes, that we're going to make our own tabernacle. We're going to do it our own way, and we're going to do it. Uh, not how God has instructed, but we're going to do things how, and we see the flesh. We see the flesh that is going on right there. And then so Ahola, she's like, I'm making my own tabernacle. And then Aholaba is that my tabernacle in her. My tabernacle, my resting place in her. But we see these two, this, these two sisters, these two representations of of the northern and the southern, of Samaria and Jerusalem. Samaria also represents, like, if we hear this in the spiritual, the Jews and the Gentiles. And then we see this right here, how both of them, they were enticed by what they heard and what they saw. And as God was speaking to me, God was really honing in, really, I like, just like a laser beam, like what Pastor Nick says, laser beam, like really like focusing in on, on what we hear and what we see. We have to guard ourselves in what we hear and what we see. And how do we do that? How do we do that in a time where it's so crazy in this world, meaning there's so many uh, things on, on the phone, there's so many things on the billboards, there's so many things that are being played on the radio. There's so many things that are doing like, just everything. But what the Lord is really, what the Lord is, I, I, I just sense in my spirit, what the Lord is saying is draw nearer to me and I'll draw nearer to, to you. Aholaba, Ahola and Aholaba, they were, they were, their hearts were drifting away as a nation, as a people. Their hearts were drifting away. They were like, they're like being enticed. They were like, oh, I like what the Assyrians are doing. I like what the Babylons are doing. I like, I'm being, your heart is being, being turned. Your heart is being turned away from the things of the Lord. And that's what happened with these nations. That's what happened with Samaria and Jerusalem. Then Ohola lusted after other lovers instead of me. She gave her love to the Assyrian officers. They were all attractive young men, captives, Captains and ca uh, commanders dressed in handsome blue uh, charioteers driving their horses. And then she, Ohola began to defile herself. And then it goes into her being, being killed, her being uh, led away and her being um, just stripped away. It says they stripped her away, her children as, they, as their slaves and then killed her. After she received her punishment, her reputation was known for every woman in the land. In verse 11, yet, yet even though Aholaba saw what had happened to Ahola, her sister, she followed right in her footsteps. She became even more deprived, abandoning herself to the lust, her lust and prostitution. And I want to read you guys this because this is, this is powerful because... Ahola and Aholabah are symbolic names for the kingdom of Israel, the ten tribes in the north, and the kingdom of Judah, the two tribes in the south. 
Ahola and Aholaba appear in, the, in uh, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 23. This chapter describes the spiritual infidelity of Israel and Judah, picturing them as two sisters. Ezekiel refers to Ahola, Ahola uh, and Aholaba identifies them as Samaria, the capital of Israel, and Jerusalem, the capital of Judah. The sisters are daughters of the same mother because Israel, Israel and Judah were originally one nation. Israel, the meanings of of two names have spe uh, special significance. And then here goes the, the names again. Ohola means her own tent or tabernacle, her own, her own tabernacle. Samaria had, separate, had a separate worship apart from the temple in Jerusalem. Aholaba means temple is in her. This represents Jerusalem where God did establish worship. And both Ahola and Aholaba engaged in prostitution or spiritual infidelity in Egypt in their youth. The older sister Ahola later played the harlot with the Assyrians. That is, Samaria and Israel had sought fulfillment and security by aligning themselves in idolatrous Assyria. And it's about how we are aligning ourselves. What does the whole represent, representation of the cross? We talked about this before. The, the vertical representing aligning ourselves with the Lord. When we take this off, when we when we lose our focus on this, then this, then this 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 is impossible. If this is not right, if this if we're not aligning ourselves, it's where we are like are aligning ourselves with. Are we aligning ourselves with uh, things by what we by what we hear? Maybe it's gossip. Maybe it's uh, uh, with men. Maybe it's uh, with women. Maybe it's, it's so many things, but. They begin to focus on other things. It says they align themselves. That is Samaria's uh, fulfillment and security by aligning themselves with the idolatry of what's going on in the land. The punishment of Hola fit, cry, uh, fit her crime. Therefore, I delivered her into the hands of her lovers. The Syrians whom she lusted, they stripped her naked, took her away, her sons and daughters killed with the sword. And her people did, uh, deported to Assyria. And the Assyrians were the instruments that God used to inflict the judgment upon Israel. In Ezekiel chapter 23, uh, Ezekiel portrays the young sister Aholaba as even more corrupt and promiscuous than Ahola. Rather than learning from her sister's mistakes, Aholaba craved after the Babylon, Babylonian idols and then the Chaldean, the Chaldean lifestyle, committing spiritual prostitution with the Babylons, Babylonians. Because of Jerusalem and uh, Judah's idolatries, God alienated himself from them and allowed them to be taken into captivity. I will turn you over to your punishment and then they will punish you according to their standards. I, do, I will direct my jealous anger against you and will deal with you in fury. Wow. Stay focused, guys. Stay focused. When in this time, in this in this hour that we are living in, stay folks, stay aligned, stay focused, stay with your hearts. That that's why it's like I need I need to get in the word every day. <laughs> I need to, I need to get into the word every day. Me, Mondo, I need to get in the word every day. I need to align myself with the Lord. I need to focus on what God is, is saying. I need to focus on my relationship with God. And don't look at any other people don't look at don't focus on on other people what other people are doing but you yourself focus on what god is what god is showing what god is is speaking to you on because a lot of times we focus on on this and this and this and we get so distracted with so many different things don't get distracted it's not a time to get distracted it's a time to really just focus on what god is doing because why because times are getting perilous times are getting crazy times are getting tough Times are, and that's why we, we really need to, you, you and I, we need to focus. And I praise the Lord that we are in this. Yes, we're in this together, but, but in this, I'm, I'm just sharing what God is. I'm just sharing the, my devotional with you guys. It's up to you to take heed to what is being shared here on this, uh, on this Facebook Live, on this YouTube, 
It's up to you to take heed of what God is saying. And a lot of you, we're, we're taking it in. It's like, yes, Lord, I, I'm being changed and transformed by this. But really focus, guys. It's not, it's not a time to, it's not a time to be plain anymore, to be one foot out, one foot in, but to say, Lord, I, I want to I wanna know you. I want to know you in a deeper way. Amen. What time is it? 5.50. Um, let's get into Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Because yes, Ezekiel was, was, a, was a tough chapter to, to read, to digest. But look what the Lord is saying. The Lord is saying, will you return back to me? Will you focus on the things that you need to? In Hebrews chapter 10, let's get into it. And when sins have, and when sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. Wow. By the blood of Jesus, Samaria, Ahola, and Aholaba can return back to the Lord. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, whose house? God's house. Let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting in him. For our guilty conscience have been sprinkled with, the, with Christ's blood to make us clean and our bodies have been washed with the pure water. Verse 23, let us hold tightly without wavering. Let us hold tightly and focus without wavering the hope we affirm for God can be trusted to keep his promises. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. That's what's happening here. I pray that you will get motivated. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. In Jesus' name, let us not neglect our meeting together as some do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. You hear that? But encourage one another, especially now, especially now. Especially now, that excites me. Especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Dear brothers, dear friends and sisters, we have deliberately continued sinning after we have received, if we continue to, uh, deliberately sinning after receiving knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. There is only the terrible ex uh Expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. For anyone who refuses to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on God and the Son of God and have trampled the blood of the covenant which made us holy. As if they were a um, common and un unholy and insulted the disdain the Holy Spirit who brings God, God's mercy. For we know the one who said... I will take revenge and I will pay them back. He said, the Lord will judge his own people. It is terrible things to fall into the hands of the living God. Think back on those early days when you first learned of Christ. Remember how you remained faithful. Even though it meant terrible suffering, sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule and were beaten. And sometimes you helped others who were suffering the same things. You uh, suffered along with those who have been thrown into jail when all you owned was, was taken away from you. You accepted it with joy. You knew that there were better things waiting for you that will last forever. Why are we doing this? Because we know there's better things waiting for us that will last forever. So don't, do not throw away any confidence in the Lord. Remember, remember the great reward it brings you. Patience, patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will and you will receive all that he has promised. Patience, endurance is what we need now. Every single one of us. Patience, endurance. 
God, help me get through this, Lord. Help me be patient. Help me endure what is happening in my life. Help me, help, help me endure. Give me the strength that I need. Give me the boldness that I need. And in verse 37, for in just a little while, the coming one will come and will not delay. And my righteous, wow. In the time that we're living in, this verse, this verse should excite you. For in just a little while, the coming one will come and will not delay. And my righteous ones will live by faith, but I will take no pleasures in anyone who turns away. But we are not like those who turn away from God to their own destructions, like Ahola and Aholaba. Mm, you see that? We are faithful ones whose souls will be saved. Why? Not by our own doing, not by our own righteousness, but because of what he has done, because he is the high priest that he, we can come boldly before him and that we can have our sins forgiven. We are the faithful ones whose souls are being saved. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Mm. So good. <laughs> so good. God is so good. And you see how God is just ministering to our hearts. Wow. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, because it says right here, Lord, that in a little while, the coming one will come and will not delay. We are waiting in expectation. We are waiting, Father. But Lord, also to it says you where thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, let us wait with the expectation knowing that we will see you soon, Father. Knowing that the coming one will come and will not delay. And let us encourage one another. Jody, continue to encourage other people. Yolanda, continue to encourage people. Mondo, continue to encourage other people. Smokey, continue to encourage one another. Helen, continue to encourage. Think of ways to encourage one another. Let us not neglect, but also to let us not neglect and meet together. Wow. <laughs> what else can I say? What else, what else can we just, <laughs> what else can I say? But my God is an on-time God. He gives us an on-time word. If somebody's experiencing depression or anxiety or fear, I pray that we will come alongside you and pray for you. Those who are struggling in their faith, those who are struggling with, with, uh, with their eyes and with their ears and, and being distracted, I pray that the Lord will speak to all of us. I pray that the Lord will minister to all of us. So let's get into Psalms 109. Oh God, whom I praise, don't stand silent and aloof while the wicked slander me and tell lies about me. They surround me and with hateful words and fight against me with no reason. I love them, but they try to destroy me with accusations. This is a Psalm of David. But you hear, you hear what Jesus went through on the cross, or you, you see, you see this representation. It says, they surround me with hateful words and fight against me for no reason. And you hear the heart of God in this. I love them, but they try to destroy me with accusations, even as I'm praying for them. What did Jesus do on the cross? He said, Father, Forgive them for they know not what they do. I love them, Lord. I love them. They repay evil for good and hate it, hate it, uh, and hatred for my love. They said, get an evil person to turn against him. Send an accuser to bring him to trial. When his case comes up for judgment, let him, let, let him be pronounced guilty. Count his prayers as sins. Wow. They're talking about... Talking about the, our, they're talking about Jesus right here. 
when it comes to his case, let, let them pronounce guilty. Count his prayers as sins. Let his years be few. Let someone else take his position. Meaning they use Barabbas to take his position. My, uh, may his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. May his children wander in, as beggars and be driven away in their, in their ruined homes. May creditors seize their entire estate and strangers take all he has earned. Let no one be kind to him. Let no one take pity with his fatherless children. May all of the offspring die. May his family name be bolted out in the next generation. May the Lord never forget the sins of, the, of his father. May his mother's sins never be erased from the record. May the Lord always remember their sins. May his name disappear from the human memory. He, for he refused all kindness to others. Uh, he per, uh, persecuted the poor and needy. He hounded the broken heart to death. He loved to be cur He loved to cuss, curse others. Now you curse him. He never blessed others, and now don't you bless him? Cursing is a natural is. Cursing is that natu natural to him as clothing or water he drinks or the rich food he eats. Now may his curses return and cling to him like clothing. May they be tied around him like a belt. May those curses become the Lord's punishment for the accusers who speak evil of me. But deal with me, O Lord, for the, for the sake of your own reputation. Rescue me because you are so faithful and good. For I am poor and needy and my heart is full of pain. I'm fading away in the shadow of a dust, and I'm brushed like off like locusts. My knees are weak and uh, fasting from fasting, and my skin and and I'm skin and bones. I'm a joke to people everywhere. When they see me, they they shake their head in scorn. Help me, O oh Lord, my God, save me because of your unfailing love. Let them see that this is your doing. Let them that you yourself have done it, Lord, and let them curse me like they. Uh, if they like, but if you, but you will bless me. When they attack me, they would be disgraced. But I, I, your servant, will go right on rejoicing. My accusers be clothed with disgrace. May the humiliations cover them like a cloak. But I will give repeated thanks to the Lord, praising him to everyone, for he stands beside the needy, ready to save them from those who condemn them. Hallelujah. Proverbs 27, verse 13. Get security from someone who guarantees a get security from someone who guarantees a stranger's debt. Get a deposit if he does it for foreigners. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. May the Lord bless your body, your labor, your emotions, spiritual and social. If you didn't get anything out of this, I pray you will get this. Align your focus. Where's your focus at? Where's your focus at, guys? Where's your focus at, Mondo? <laughs> Where's your focus at, Mondo Jr.? My focus is on the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you guys for tuning in. I pray that you guys have a blessed day. We'll see you guys tomorrow. See Dios quiere. If you don't have a home church or if you want to come visit us here in the city of Southgate, come on by. You're more than welcome. May the Lord bless you, keep you. May his face shine upon you. We'll see you guys tomorrow. It is Friday tomorrow. We'll see what the Lord says mañana. God bless you. Bye. Bye. Bye.